Possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. It's over the ball. Hello, welcome to the RTGA podcast. Mikey Stafford here, stepping in for Jackie Hurley, and I'm joined by Tyrone legend Peter Canavan, Cork legend Rory O'Neill, and Monaghan <laughs> legend Melky Clerken. How are we all doing, lads? Very good, Mikey. Very good. Good stuff. It feels like we, the hurling was dealt with yesterday by by Shane McGrath. I think about eighty percent of the podcast was uh, Monster and a little mention of Enster at the end. So it feels you know the the, the hurling is upon us, and so. Football feels a need to up its game, or maybe that's just how the uh, fixture makers wanted it to look. Because um, after a fairly low key start to the championship, I think we're kind of getting into the meat of it now. We've got <coughs> league champions Derry taking on Jim McGuinness's Donny Gall, and on RTE Television six fifteen on Saturday evening, and then we've got Cavan v Tyrone in Ulster at four o'clock, and um, and then we've got Mayo v Ross Common on the television on Sunday, and you've got Kerry v Cork and GA go on Saturday afternoon. So um, there's at least three competitive matches there and another that's a fixture in the calendar. Um, so we'll start with Derry and Donegal. Um, Peter, this, this is an interesting matchup, I suppose, as much for, for, for what's on the sideline, I suppose. Jim McGuinness returning and um, Mickey Hart's first championship game in charge of, of Derry. But I suppose that, that kind of distracts from what should be a very interesting match. You know, obviously Derry will go in as favourites as league champions and and the scene is one of the big three now, but you know, Donegal did very well in Division Two. McGuinness has unearthed a few players, seemed to have a bit of depth if he's over his injuries, and has a couple of different ways of skinning the cat. And it'll be interesting to see how they approach this game really. Do you think he'll bring his UEFA pro license into full effect here and go with a high press against the Derry team who seem absolutely purpose built to spring a high press and absolutely <laughs> score like mad? He might have to call on some of his American football expertise as well to, to get the better of these day, man. Um, look, you're you're right. There's a, a lot made of the the side show, but it's not a bad side show. Mickey Hart v, v Jim McGuinness. Um, and they've had a bit of history down through the years. Um, it would be fair to say that McGuinness has held the upper hand on a lot of those clashes. But I'd say this time round, it's it's Mickey Hart is holding all the aces. Yeah. Um. There's a lot. Uh, I don't think Mickey has to do a lot in terms of his troops. The way they play, they play to a very set system. They know what they're about. They're a team that's been in development this what four five years, and it's been an upward trend. And a lot of people felt that when when Mickey came in, he was going to have to add. To the dairy panel to, to strengthen them he, he has managed that he has brought in two three you could say four players that have really come on have got plenty of experience through the league and now dairy have a strong panel they don't have a strong thir- 12 13 players maybe that people were suggesting last year they have a really strong panel there's a sense of togetherness there so I don't think he has to do, or the day management have to do a lot. Um, they know what they're going to be up against in, in terms of Donegal. And it's a case of whether in, in the space of four or five months that Jim McGuinness can uh, manage to... He, he's managed to improve them. There, there's no doubt about that. They've, they've won Division Two, But can he bring them on that much in the space of four or five months to, to challenge what many people would, would see as um, all iron favourites. Uh, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced about that. And I do believe that, that Donegal will, will certainly give them a game. They'll, they'll make it difficult for, for Derry. But I just think it, it's, it's a massive uh, step up in, in such a short space of time. Um, but look, it'll still be intriguing and, and all the rest. But I think the outcome will be very much uh, to the favour of the Red and Whites. Yeah, um, we're probably asking. I know you're going to this match, Malachi. We're probably asking a bit much of Jim McGuinness to to pull a rabbit out of his hat, as Peter says. the The league was fine. They they did what they were expected to do. I think the two teams expected to come out of Division Two came out of Division Two. Donegal won a fairly strange league final, which I don't think either themselves or Armagh will be thinking too much about come the end of the year. Um, 
But would it be fair to say what we have seen of Jim McGuinness's Donegal so far makes them a fine Division 2 team and they'll hold their head above water in Division 1 next year. But the idea of them beating a Derry team who seem motivated to win Ulster, it, it seems far-fetched to the point that it would, it would go high up on Jim McGuinness um, CV were they to pull off a win here. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be very interested to see what sort of game this is. Um, I Like... I don't think on any level that there's any part of Derry that is going in here to take a dive or to, you know, not go all out to win or anything like that. I, I don't I don't think that's part of it's certainly not part of Mickey Hart's makeup. It's not part of this Derry team's makeup. And as Peter says, like the the thing with them is that they're in that beautiful place that that contenders like to be in where everybody knows their job, everybody knows how they play, they like they go out for every game and they apply the formula that they've come up with to every game. And um, you know, they like motivation isn't gonna be a problem. All of that sort of stuff is sort of taken as a given now. And like that's where every team wants to get to. And there is ju- still a, a wee part of me that kind of wants to see it, uh, kind of wonders if they looked at Dublin sleepwalking their way through the Meath game last week and kind of went, well, you know, three months down the line, we need absolutely everything we have to beat either Dublin or Kerry or both to win our All-Ireland. And so I do wonder... Uh, does that infiltrate them at all this week? Do they come up against a Donegal team that is at the start of its journey that's going to be coming with everything that they have? You know, we know we know what the building blocks are for uh, any team that's going to come through Ulster and really contend at All-Ireland level. It's you, you get your Ulster in the bank first. Derry have two in a row put in the bank, two Ulster finals in a row that both went to extra time. Uh, and last year went to penalties. I will just be interested to see how much of the sort of absolutely eyeballs out, rabid uh, dairiness that has really made them the best team in Ulster over the last two years, um, how much of that will be on show. And if it's coming down to it in the last 10 minutes, um, does... Does Donegal do Donegal have a greater want? Do they do do they have is it more important to them at this point in their journey to win this game than it is for Derry? And I don't know if that has enough of an effect. I don't know um if if they're gonna be close enough to Derry for that to even come into the reckoning. Maybe Derry go out and put two goals on them in the first half and hold them at arm's length for the whole of the game, and that's fine, and that's how, how the game works out. But I there is just, I think it's a really interesting year for the Ulster Championship. The w- One of my absolute favourite days of sport last year was the Ulster Final in Clonus. It was one of the real throwback Ulster Finals. It was a gloriously hot day. The game was insane. It kept going over and back and over and back all the way. The penalty shootout was amazing. The Clonus was completely packed. It was one of those days that you're going, why would anyone want to get rid of this or or diminish this or take this out of the Irish sporting calendar or anything like that? But I do wonder <coughs> somewhere along the way, are our Ulster teams gonna get sick of looking at Dublin and Kerry just waltzing through this month, this particular month mm. of game? <clears throat> and arriving at the start line for the All-Ireland Championship without a scratch on them, uh, whereas the Ulster teams are beating the shit out of each other. So I, I'm i really looking forward to this Ulster Championship because I, I wonder when when or if that sort of drop-off of, of intensity is going to come. It may never come, I don't know, but if it does, like, Derry are the perfect candidates for it, like, because they have... They've done all. They've they've done everything that needs to be done in Ulster. So we'll see. Yeah, Rory. I suppose the question is, given their form and how they dealt with Dublin, um, 
do do Derry need to be at that kind of rabid level of intensity to to beat Donegal, or has their game come on to the point where there is now support for Shane McGuigan in the scoring stakes? Like Conor McCluskey are scoring goals from the from the fence. Um, you know they've developed arguably the well what what Brian Fenton thinks is the best midfield partnership in the country, which is uh which is high praise indeed. So you'd wonder whether Peter can tell us in a minute, and we all know it. Mickey Hart goes out to win every game; that's his thing. But and as it's a hard, very hard to see them throwing it, as Maliki says. But you wonder, could they not take a leaf out of Dublin's book? There's no way they're going to do that. But is there a chance that they can maybe tone it down, play at eighty, eighty-five percent, and beat Donegal? I don't think so. I mean, it's a local derby. It's a full house. It's going to be a rabid atmosphere. There's a real wave and a buzz in behind Derry at the minute. Mickey loves to win everything. I know. I, like, I, I think there are two really key things there that Maliki mentioned. The type of game that we're likely to see. Because you have to bear in mind, this is two teams that met two years ago, which was like almost, you know, depending on what you're having for breakfast, some people thought it was the worst excesses of modern Gaelic football. And other people thought it was intriguing, right? So, but no, there's two very different managements in place. And maybe it's the case that the game reflects that. But I think what's far more interesting for me, and I'm sure for the listeners, in terms of Maliki's second point is, and I think it's what people will want to hear from Peter, really, as opposed to a Cork fella, is the notion that this is um, a seminal year for the Ulster Championship, Peter. Just just, just the first point, uh, sorry, go back to Maliki's point about... Um... You know, Derry's prospects of, of winning the All Ireland would be better served, possibly, if they didn't have to go through a difficult Ulster campaign. Uh, I agree a hundred percent with that. I think if they happen to lose Sunday's game or Saturday's game, it's not the end of the world for them. I, I think they will have time to recover, refresh, and set their, their their reset their targets, and they'll still be in a very good. They could be in a better position. Uh, why will that not happen, Rory? You've already said we know what Mickey Hart's like. Mm. So uh, on top of the aspect that he's he treats every game as one that he wants to win, and and that's you know innate. The the other aspect is the Jim McGuinness factor that yeah. he's he's well aware that Donegal's success, the throne were used as the springboard for Donegal's uh, All Ireland win, mm. and there's no doubt about that. Both men have acknowledged that. Uh, since McGuinness, when he came in back then, said the team of the target in the back w- was thrown. They measured themselves uh, every time they played thrown. Um, so now, who do you think is, is the standard bearers <laughs> when they come in? It's another team that's managed by, by Mickey Hart. So that's why this Saturday's game takes on another layer of significance in that uh this will be the stepping board, the, the, the springboard for for Donegal to go on to greater things. They may not win an All-Ireland this year, but if they can crack this one, that, that that's, well, uh, you know, and, and do a serious degree of self-belief in that Donegal team that they're going the right places. Um, so there is no chance of Derry uh, losing focus or, or being having it in the back of their heads. And if a few of their players did, I can guarantee you that uh, during the week that Mickey Hart would, would soon have got that notion out of their heads. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, it is definitely two teams going going to win everyone. And in terms of the bigger picture, absolutely. It's the, the cry. Uh, I think it's uh, I think it's fair enough. It's well enough founded that the majority of pundits um, and, and commentators in the game at the minute would be suggesting that for the greater good of the GAA, that they have to look at uh, the problem that has become provincial championships. And you talk about Monster Hurling and Ulster football as being, the, you know, holding the argument for the retention of those championships. Uh, I would still like to see them in place, but it looks as if the time has come maybe to reverse uh, the provincial championships with the national leagues. And it, it, unless we have brilliant championships all around I, I think it's inevitable that it's going to go down that way so um 
the Ulster Championship is still the Ulster Championship and, and teams will still want to win a throne in Cavan. There's going to be a massive crowd at that on, on Sunday. Uh, again, the, the attraction of winning Ulster for Cavan, for throne, for Donegal, for Derry is still massive regardless of, of um, further down the line. Yeah. I sure don't worry. The, the GA president's talking this week about moving the All-Ireland uh, finals back to September. If every county in Ireland can agree to a template for club championships, sure, he might as well suggest a 13 month of the year just to free up some space. So it's about as likely to happen. Um, Maliki, come, come back to this game. What of Donegal? You know, because the focus here is is Derry largely, I suppose, given their uh, where they are in the game at the moment and kind of what yeah. they did against Dublin. But, you know, um, if if McGinnis if the injuries are kind of cleared up because he was like most managers dealing with a lot of inter- injuries during the league, you know, Oshin Gallen, Paddy McBrearty, or if you know if you have the two of them fit and fire and inside, you know, there's not too many full forward lines more more threatening. You know, they 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 have they have ways in which they can worry Derry, no doubt. Uh, yes, yeah, you say that. Uh, I like I think Oshin Gallen has the makings of a fantastic footballer um like he clearly has that uh, but we have yet to really see it over over a sustained level of championship games and i know he's 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 had injury problems uh, really bad ones down the years um but like um i think sometimes that w- when when a guy is that talented you sort we can sort of take it as a uh, as a given that that they have this really dangerous inside forward line, and you you know you got to see it yet. Um, what really kind of struck me, I I saw them twice this year, uh, kind of close up. Uh, the first was the Mechanic Cup game against uh, Derry, which you know it's a Mechanic Cup game, and it was a brutal night up in Oma, and so like how much can you really extrapolate from it at all at all? Um, that was interesting though that night that um. They, uh, Derry had had the wind in the first half, and it was it was a pretty big big wind. And Donegal went in only a couple of points behind, and you were kind of going, well, they've done the hard bit now, like you know, and let's see them kick on. And they went, they kind of they kind of just got kind of blown away, and even like Brendan Rogers got sent off weirdly for, for a, maybe the only time in his career uh, for for a, a kind of an accidental stamp that night. And Derry still just kind of knuckled down and showed that they were so far ahead in terms of like game management and sort of just the knowledge of what the situation demanded. Um, and look, uh, you, so the other time that I saw him was was uh, the Division Two final against Armagh, and like God, there was so many times that the, that game was just there for them to to kill off, like they were. They, I think on some level they, I thought they looked a bit young there sometimes, but they did look. They they came out ahead and they won and they won it and it was a great thing for them. But I thought that they were, they were sometimes in that second half they were better than than the ultimate one point margin of victory. I think on some level they they strike me as a bit young and and a little nah leaderless is overdoing it, but they 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 could do with a few more um experience and like that's where the difference would be or it looks to me where the difference between them and Derry is uh I don't know on on average age is there would there actually be a whole pile between them but Derry have you know the the, you you'd trust your life to Connor Glass and Brendan Rogers like uh, to to know what to do in the last Mm -hmm. 15 minutes of a game that kind of way um yeah look all all um all things being equal Derry are, are the better side uh, and the more experienced side and they've done it all. Um, but like we 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 put a lot of store in the unknown um, that a Messiah can bring and we'll see. We'll see. We, we're, we're expecting stuff. We're expecting Donegal to, to just improve from, from what they were. Uh, I haven't seen an awful lot of huge sort of tactical innovation. I think I think the the word kind of went around that the that the that they were doing this big high press, and they like 
There was one game in the league. I can't remember which one. There was one where it was very evident, but it wasn't for the whole game. Yeah, it wasn't even the league. It was. I I think it was the first McKenna Cup game actually. Mm. (laughs) They went after Cork the first day out as well. That was it. Yeah, and they were and using the sideline to to hem players in and all that sort of stuff. And 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 that's great. But like, you know, no team is going to be mad enough to do that all the time anyway. So you know, pick your moments. Really. Yeah, exactly. So the idea that they're this high press and high energy, blah blah blah, like that's (laughs) you know. You, mm. you you got to pull back a little on that, um, yeah. but it'll be look. It's a fascinating game. It really it is. is. Yeah. Um, before we move off, I think I think I don't need to ask your predictions. I think I'm I'm hearing three people saying they're going. No, to I give Donegal good. a good chance. I really do. I think Donegal. Oh, yeah, I do. I think uh, McGuinness will relish this. I think they'll be right up for it. Um, I think youthful exuberance can count for a lot. Derry's eyes will be on much so you're told. prizes. So <laughs> I, I know I would give Donegal a very good chance here. And I think the Ulster Championship could probably do with a bit of an upset. And there's usually one every year in the Ulster Championship. There's been one well, already. Right. <laughs> it, well, I got what? Calvin Manning, come on. No. <laughs> he needs to tell himself that right. That's a 50 50. So I know I'd, I'd fancy, I'd give Donny Gall a rattle here. Okay. Uh, we'll move on to Sunday. So, and um, Peter, your own county, it's, it's, it's the same old tune really but you like coming into the championship for the last couple of years a lot of questions around form injury issues losing one of the managers to, to ill health doesn't he's, doesn't he's help he's back he's back which is great he's back this weekend which is fantastic by the way yeah oh that's that's what i heard anyway peter is that correct uh, that's what i've heard too yeah, yeah. i can't say for definite but he has he has been in with the team on a couple of occasions and and speaking to the boys so that's good. That's that's it brilliant good, to yeah. hear. Um, yeah. I don't think he's been in full time, uh, to be honest. But um, whether he's fit to to withstand the pressures of standing on the sideline watching this thrown team play championship football, I'm not too sure. But um, <laughs> he's on the right road, and that's that's great to hear. Oh, that is great to hear, and uh, and a much needed boon, I suppose, for for the panel after. I, I just suppose like that 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 final outing against the Dubs would have really taken any goodness out of the league, really, wouldn't it? Or or do you think it can be just you know it was the league, it's done, it's finished, it was Dublin in Croke Park, forget about it, or can, can that leave a bit of a of stain on a team? Yeah, uh, look, uh, yes, it, it can, and um, the experience of playing in Croke Park and being overrun and and the manner that they were, it's, it's not great for any young lads, uh, confidence it's not great for anybody, no matter what stage of the career you're at, to endure that. Uh, the fallback, and, and it can be a bit false at the time, of, you know, this has happened thrown before, and Jerry, and you've seen what happened after that, <laughs> can't, can't go and do that, that doesn't happen every year. And, uh, you know, again, on Sunday's line, I think we're five debutants for... That's right, yeah. football, very young. Uh, don't like using this this word. We're not allowed to use it anymore. Transition. Transition. Uh, <laughs> play maybe, but in terms of the the status of the team, that's obvious. If any team is starting uh, so many younger players, so to follow on what you're saying, what can we expect from Throne? Throne could win this game by five or six points. On the other hand, you wouldn't be surprised if Throne lost this game by five or six points, and that has been the nature of their performances, even within games. They've been inconsistent. The games they've won, for example, against Mayo and against Monon in particular time, parts of the Monon game, they, they were brilliant, moving the ball really fast, cut Monon open. And then the reverse of that, they were cut wide open and, and Monon uh, had goal chances, took goal chances and created goal chances. So it's it's a team that, that's fine their feet and they're, and they're very hard to, to predict. And they're going to be coming up against a physical team. I was impressed with Calvin's physicality against Monaghan and a lot of those players have been knocking about for a while and in terms of strength and SNC they're at a very good level and like the Donegal Derry game, the battle of the sidelines, uh, Calvin have won Stephen O'Neill uh, standing on the line who would know these boys inside out and obviously that's a massive plus to, to Calvin come Sunday. Um, just thinking uh, in your time, can you remember a Tyrone team that would have had five championship debutants? It seems like a lot for like Toronto, Last year. <laughs> <laughs> possibly yeah. it does yeah it does seem I, I think that the word transition is probably a fair one um Maliki obviously you uh you were a witness to the Cavan Cavan's victory in the first round mm. were you you were um well, w- would you say a, a, a fantastic win and like it, the, the manner of it and everything else 
kind of got the pulse racing in a week when that much got the pulse racing for Cavan, would you say if there's if there's well one question mark i could see would you say they are overly reliant on paddy lynch in attack oh y- yeah yeah like they're and and in the end he like he scored one nine but it was one one from play he was actually reasonably well mm. sort of uh shackled uh, from open play, when you consider that the goal was uh, in garbage time from forty yards, and Rory Began was uh, had given up the given up the ghost running back. Um, so, uh, they he is certainly their marquee forward, and he like to be fair to him, some of the frees that day in Clonus, there was a brutal wind. Uh, some of the frees he scored. From all angles, were 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 fairly exceptional, you know. He mm-hmm. didn't miss one all day. Um, um, they're they're sneakily experienced, Cavan. Actually, um, you kind of look at their team and you do see that there's a good core of five or six of them there that are they're probably among the 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 most capped Cavan players of of all times. If if capped is the the right word there. And I see Killian Clark is back. Um, he was sort of uh, the glorified water boy in in Clonus, and he's I see he's named in the squad this time around. I don't know how much of it he he will play or not. Um, like I have it on nine to four for this game. Uh, and throw it or one to two. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that now. To be honest with you, like they're 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 one of those counties that kind of bounces up and down. Like they they. In the in all the madness of the two COVID league seasons, they 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 somehow managed to fall down to Division Four. Uh, just sort of like like talk about they they fell through the cracks really. They um, weren't the first. They weren't the first to manage that. Weren't the first, but like look, they're a mid-ranking Division Two team, and they're they're solid at it. Uh, it's Galligan's first year. He's he's an interesting dude to watch on the sideline. Like he 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 does not shut up. Like he he micromanages this team to the nth degree, and um, that's that's fine when there's uh eight thousand in Clonus and uh everybody can hear everything. Uh, but um, as more players come to the or more as the crowds get bigger and a bit louder and it gets a bit more tense, um, you wonder. You're wasting your time. Uh, well, yeah, like, look, he's had with the championship, with the league, with the mechanic cup, he's probably had ten matches with them now. So, so some of it's, you know, he's he's bound to be uh, getting them into into the sort of place that he wants them. Um, they're a decent side, like you know, mm. they 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 have the the experienced players like like Kieran Brady uh, and Porrick Faulkner and these guys who who again like they're playing intercounty. Eight nine years, like Kieran Brady won an All Ireland club. Was it intermediate this year with Arva? Was that intermediate or junior? I can't remember which. And um, you know, uh, like a load of these guys still have their Ulster medal from twenty twenty. Um, they probably on some level have an experience uh advantage on Sunday over some of these Tyrone players. You know, mm. um, and like they don't have this sort of star power of 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 say Derek Hanneman, you know. Um but the rest of us I I say they match up pretty well. Mm. I think uh, Con Kilpatrick isn't in the Tyrone squad. Is he hurt or he got injured. He, yeah. he did Malik he got injured I think it was getting Kerry. That's right. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I was down I at that actually yeah. With himself and Pity Hart I haven't recovered from their injuries yeah. in in the league. Um, that, that's that's significant misses, you know. Um, so Connor Miller, Connor Miller still out. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. I wouldn't rule out. I, w- I wouldn't rule Cavan out of this at all. So. Yeah. The one thing, Rory, I suppose, in Cavan's uh, a plus in Cavan's kind of uh, de- uh, kind of ledger, you would say is well, you know, they they've had an outing in Championship. You know, they 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 got their win over Monaghan. I wonder how much how much store we should put in that because it's been said and and Mally he mentioned it earlier and he mentioned it, uh, writing after the piece that you know. 
uh, Galligan could be quite so precise because it wasn't much of a championship atmosphere. I wonder, like, with, with the championship kind of starting off in such a kind of lukewarm fashion, I wonder, does that Monaghan game almost even count as being the white-hot uh, intensity of championship that will actually give Cavan some kind of an advantage over Tyrone, who are coming in for their first championship match? I think, in fairness, the nature of the rivalry between Cavan and Monaghan even though it might not have seemed like that. The game, I suppose, was a classic in the modern context of Gaelic football where we kind of only fired for the last 10 minutes and it was very exciting then. But that will definitely stand to them. I think the only issue for me from a Cavan perspective is their record against Tyrone mm-hmm. is yeah. abominable. Yeah. It's abominable. I mean, they, I, 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 I tried to get it checked. I could be wrong. I think the last time they've beaten Tyrone the championship is 1983. Now, did you check uh, it, Peter? I'll, Sorry, I'll, I'll counter that. Ray. A few Calvin men were fit to send me reminders during the week that it's 114 years since Throne beat Calvin in a championship match in Calvin. Well, yeah. that's, that's what I'm listening to. Right. So, <laughs> right. so, so, you're, Brett, saying you're, saying you're, 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 you're heading to the cauldron of, of Brefney on Sunday. Um, yeah, like I think from Tron's perspective as well, you know, Peter will know this better than anyone. There is massive change. I mean, Dara Canavan is such a young man in his own right. And he's already effectively um, one of the leaders of the team. And he's still only, what, I don't know, what age is Dara? Uh, Peter, is he 22? You might know. He's <laughs> 24. Is he 24? And, so, and he's already a lead, you know? So, like, that's the only thing that would probably have you. And Maliki makes a very good point around the experience. Kevin, a little bit more wily, a bit more, um, bit more miles on the clock. Lads that have been around the block, but I just still can't get over. I think there's just certain, there's some things in GAA where one team just has it over the other. And until you book yeah, that and, trend. But, but beyond that, Rory, like Throne are a Division 1 team. They, That's it. They were fine That's it. in Division 1. Like, I, yeah. like, you, like you can always rely on Throne to have a one or two real blowout days in, in, a, in, a, in the course of a league. But they'll be fine. Like, uh, as Peter said, they kind of, they have a great kind of way of, of dusting themselves off and just getting on with it. Um, uh, I was down at the their game in Killarney actually where where uh, Con Kilpatrick got, got hurt all right yeah and like Kerry ended up winning that game but like mm. Throne were 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 right there with them all the way through you know there there were it's not that they're they were never really in danger of kind of going out of the division either you know and and a division one team against a team that's after you know they were they were solid in division two but. You know, they were still, it was still their first year in Division Two. Yeah. I haven't been down in three. You know, there is that, you know, you, you talk your way around these matches and then you can sometimes be there 15 minutes into the game and go, oh, right. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's yeah, it's yeah, a Division exactly. One team against a yeah. Division Two team. Man. Okay. In a word, because uh, as, is, as is right, because it's the Ulster Championship, we, we've, we've spent a long time on two games. We have a few more to deal with. So, in a word, uh, Tyrone or Cavan, Malky? I can't go with Kevin just for relax. Rory? Not uh, Tyrone. Peter? Tyrone, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> First time in over a century. <laughs> um, moving on, Connacht, 4pm Sunday, Dr. Hyde Park, which mm-hmm. gives Lee Keegan the heebie-jeebies. He was telling us in his RTE column, so he's glad he wasn't a free taker. The idea of having, of clearing the nets and kicking the ball into the graveyard, he was really, it, it played on his mind. Um but it, it probably also plays on Ross Common's mind that, as is the case with a lot of these rivalries in Connacht, Peter, the away team tends to have the advantage. Mayo, I think Lee Keegan said he never lost in the hide. So the big pitch suits them um, yeah. much more than it suits them playing in McHale Park. So it, Mayo had a very, I suppose, a cured egg of a league, but Roscommon really looked like a team kind of devoid of of confidence. Would you be expecting... Mayo to uh, come through here away from yeah, home as as form and history would say. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Lee's comments were up in the changing room wall of of was common. Um, he had he had talked about never lo- losing in the hide, but he also said about how Davy Burke was bullish and enthusiastic last year, and this year all he's doing is making excuses. <laughs> so if that doesn't fire up the the was common man, um, I, I think. 
Mayo and in, in particular have learned from, from last year. Uh, I don't think Kevin McStay had any real interest in making the top two. He wanted to retain a Division One status. I know they came up to Oma with, with a very weakened team and I think their security was never in doubt. So they're setting themselves up for the championship. A wee bit like, like Kevin, their last two league games were really poor and something similar to Mayo, they, they knew that they were they had their Division 2 status retained and their focus was, was on championship training. So with that in mind, they, they have a, a game under the, their belt out in New York. They're, I think they have the players who can hurt the opposition at the back. They, they have forward. Now, we haven't seen that this year in the league where they haven't clicked, they haven't jailed as a unit. So they've had a bit of time to do that since their last league game. And I, I would be expecting a big performance out of out of Mayo. And you could argue the same for Roscommon. They're, they haven't reached the levels that they did last year. They, they played some brilliant football. But you only have to go through their, their forward line that they have individuals who are potential match winners, O'Carroll and uh, the Smiths. So look, they still have quality, but um, I would be surprised to say the least if, if Mayo would come through in this one. Yeah. Maliki, the... The concern for Mayo, as it ever was, I suppose, is the the, the those two words, marquee forwards, and they never seem to have enough of them. They had Killian O'Connor, and no one in support it seemed, and now Killian is kind of in a supporting role. So there's no one, but not enough so to say that he is a marquee forward along with Ryan O'Donoghue. So the the hand wringing seems to be that there's not enough people pitching him with scores alongside Ryan O'Donoghue. Um, is that a fair complaint, or the likes of Fergal Boland and others kind of showing? promise enough to yeah i mean i suppose it is to a certain extent uh, uh a couple of things on it though like how many countries do have that <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. you know, the ones uh, that win uh, all ireland's i think Maliki. Like, you know carry have two right so they don't have three so let, let's not get, get too carried away uh also i see uh, uh killian o'connor isn't in the squad uh for the weekend hmm. um um, so he'll obviously not be uh, uh, helping out uh, Ryan this weekend. Um, yeah, they're they're an interesting side. They're God, they're quite a young side now. Um, Mayo, like even if you're if you're looking through their bench, it's there's a lot of younger names there. Um, Owen McLaughlin hasn't made the twenty six either. Um, it's definitely one of those games where you're kind of going right. This will tell us a little of who Mayo are now. Um, the league, it was funny talking to Kevin McStay after some games in the league where uh, I was at the Dublin game down in, in uh, Castle Bar where they nicked a win in the last minute. Ryan O'Donoghue took a mark out by the sideline and took a really quick free inside uh, for, uh, I think it was Conor Loftus to score the winner. And uh, like McStay's absolute delight at getting the the win rather than the draw there was be, was com- almost entirely predicated on the fact that they wanted to get to six points and that is all they wanted <laughs> <laughs> because then they could just you know stay in well, division one, stay in division one and you know uh, work backwards from from the championship um, so they did what they wanted to do so. Like since they got to their sixth point, which uh, which I think was in the fourth or fifth game, like you can sort of throw out everything else, uh, including their their trip to New York, you know. So um, they're an unknown a little bit. Um, they uh, like they have like that that full forward line is is like it's it's interesting, you know. It's Aidan O'Shea, Tommy Conroy, and Ryan O'Donoghue. They bring three completely different uh, games to a full forward line, which is, you know, if you're setting out to stop them, then you need to find three completely different methods of of, of uh, keeping tabs on them. Um, there's a few of them that um, you, you have to say, like, if they're not going to do it this year, if they're not going to really sort of step up this year, then how much of a future is there for them like you you have the likes of of Tommy Conroy who has played in has he played in two all-Ireland finals he's definitely played in one you know uh and 
uh, okay, he missed missed the year with it with his cruise ship, but he's a guy who every Mayo supporter is excited about. You know, but someone like that only has to has to spend a couple of seasons not quite delivering on the promise, and they get dismissed very quickly. You know, they mm-hmm. they kind of go, well, God, we thought he was going to be the guy who's going to come in and score a goal a game and all that sort of stuff, and then he he turns into another sort of ten a penny Mayo forward. So I think it's a really big year for them. Um, I see that they're like, are they? They're sort of fifth-ish, fifth, sixth in the in the rankings of of who can challenge for an All Ireland. What or at least what people think uh, is possible for uh, an All Ireland challenger. Um, I'm not sure what beating Ross Common one way or the other will be the measure of them. Again, you know, the championship starts and the. In in was it three four weeks from now on the uh, the middle weekend in May so yeah, the 18th um, of May. they they've all they they've ne- they never worry too much about Russ Common and by the same token can get beaten by them mm. every every once in a while uh, as, as Peter said like Russ Common have the better forward line probably um so much so like Andrew Smith is is really playing in midfield these days because they have enough forwards ahead of him um I I, I would kind of lean towards Mayo, but not with any... I wouldn't be dogmatic about it. Yeah. Uh, it's Kevin McStay's first year in charge of Mayo last year was also the first year of the new championship structure, Roy, uh, as, as pointed out. He, we think he learned a bit from it, so... Big time. That yeah. was, it, was, it was exactly the point I was going to make. Like uh, Kevin, yeah. is ex- Kevin is extremely strategic, and one of the big things that I think uh, played a significant part in their downfall last year was... Um, lose to Cork the following week, have to absolutely pull everything out to beat Galway in Salt Hill. And then the reward for that is they have to go again the following week to try and take down Dublin in Croke Park, where the game was competitive right up until halftime and just completely collapsed in the second half and took a bit of a trimming. And I would imagine a lot of that came down to fatigue, mental and physical, and I think Kevin will put a lot of store in seed one. Seed one, funnily enough, will be significant. All the whinging and moaning about the provincial championships, winning the provincial championships, what does it mean? Well, if, number one, because we know who's going to win in Munster and Leinster, it'll mean you'll avoid Dublin and Kerry. So it gives you a better platform to try and avoid that prelim quarterfinal, which definitely cost teams last year. And I think Kevin will put a lot of store on that and go after this kind of championship big time. Yeah. So peak peak now for the championship and peak again for the championship. I will say though, sorry, sorry, Mikey. I will say though that people latched on to Mayo winning the league last year and then getting hammered by the Dubs at the end of the championship as, you know, Winning the league is the wrong thing to do, mm. uh, yeah, yeah. And, and but like Mayo beat Kerry in Killarney last year. That's right, mm. number one seeding or no number one seeding, and they followed it up by beating Galway in Salt Hill. So like I, I they got hockeyed by the All Ireland champions uh, after being more or less level them with them at half time. The eventual All Ireland champions, yeah, yeah they did. I, no, yeah, like I look, listen, I th- th- to me they haven't gone anywhere. I just think Kevin is has the season mapped out slightly different this time round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. and I I do fancy them to beat Ross Common. Okay, and uh, I think you're the same, Peter. Are you you're fancying a Mayo win here? Are you? Certainly. Yeah. Okay. We'll move on then. Um, the final game we'll, we'll, we'll put any kind of a focus on and it'll be a light enough focus. Uh, yeah. 1995, it was a great year. It was a great year. A lot of, a lot of good albums came out that year. Last Again, yeah. Leftism, yeah. A Story More and Glory, um, Great Escape, Different Class, The Bends. And it was a lovely summer. The weather was great. So Rory, I am praying that Cork somehow managed to win in Clarity for the first time since 1995 because I believe it will herald in a fantastic <laughs> summer of both weather and music. So could you just make sure they, they manage that? That'd be great, please. Uh, uh, no, it's... It's going to be a tall order and a tough ask. You know, look, it's two teams not too dissimilar, we'll say. I mean, if you if you're looking Der- Donegal versus Derry, I mean, Cork really didn't raise too much of a gallop in Division 2. They were probably lucky enough to beat Fermanagh, lost to Louth, you know, won their last couple of games against two of the teams that ended up being relegated, uh, have failed to be in the lead in any game at halftime so far this year. <laughs> Have, have been behind in every single match at halftime. 
if they do that on Saturday, it could be ugly. I don't think they will. Usually raise their game for Kerry. It will be seen as a good test for them. Um, but, I mean, look, if you're looking at that Kerry team, like there, there will be aspects where they can get after Kerry. Uh, uh, like J the absence of Jason Foley might open up some space for the likes of Conor Corbett and um, Brian Hurley. Four o'clock throw-in on a Saturday afternoon in Killarney, which should mean a reasonably good crowd and the weather is meant to be good. But in fairness, look, look, if you're appraising this fixture uh, on, in any rational sense, you can only really see one outcome. Yeah, the teams are pretty similar, Peter, to last year. I was looking at it, um, Cork of 11 is the same 15 out and Kerry of 12, as as named. And, you know, in the their, their second meeting, or sorry, they're all in championship last year. It was only 114 to 15 to Kerry, and a lot of people would say that that Kerry penalty was a little bit fortunate. So, um, as Roy says, Cork do put it up to Kerry. On paper, there's absolutely no reason why Cork should win this match, obviously. But the, the, the absolute defeatism there is maybe a little bit harsh as well is it yeah and the, and they did beat mayo last year isn't that right as yeah. well knocked over us coming the league champions <laughs> um <laughs> but um they look i i do expect a big game from cork when you go through their their players um up front connor corbett you know this is a chance for him to really make a big statement really talented player um and he's got chris oak jones and uh, alongside him there brian Hurley, of course you know, we, we all know what he can do in front of the post. You have you look at their bench, their, their midfield is more than capable of, of winning their own ball if, if both teams, if the kickers are forced to go long. And they will um, be. Every, yeah. you know, you would say that Cork should be breaking 50-50 in that regard. Um, and, and bear in mind, defensively, Kerry or minus Jason Foley, one of their best man markers. And if you look at the Cork bench, if things aren't going well, they have experience players there, uh, Sherlock and Dean John work to come on to, to, to make a difference. So they always do, they always can step it up a, a bit and they're going to have to step it up a good bit to, to compete with Kerry. Um, and if they do, they can look back on the turning point the end of February when they'd lost their first three league games. They were losing against Fermanagh going into the day in seconds and really Dean got a goal to turn their season around and, and since that that they haven't lost any game. So um, they appear to be going the right road. They have talented players. Um, a lot depends on what, what Kerry we, comes out of the traps on, on Sunday. If it's Kerry that's highly motivated and, and synced with one another, then it, it's, it's only going to be one-way traffic. But Kerry haven't been overly impressive. Some of the lads already mentioned it there already. They've been winning games without setting the world alight. Have they added in? And Joe Connor has been playing well. Um, they've only scored what two goals in in the last five games. You know they haven't been hitting the net, and both those goals I think actually came from from Joe O'Connor. So have they added to their firepower and and their forward threat? Not really. I know Killian yeah. Burke has, has come in wing half forward and has performed well. So um, look. I still think Kerry's going to win, but there's there's questions to be asked of of Kerry, and if if Cork can do that, they can make this game interesting. Last last point to you, Maliki. Uh, could you make the case that uh, of all the teams, you know, we talk about the uneven provincial championships, etc., mm -hmm. which we kind of opened on, Cork maybe are the most unfortunate team because everyone complains about poor old teams in Leinster now one of those teams in Leinster has ever done what Cork did last year in the championship, really, like in the last ten fifteen years, and like beating the Mayo or, you know, kind of really, you know, kind of yeah. caused a shock. Cork are a team, a county who are capable of great things, but are kind of, kind of very much under a jackboot. And may maybe we are a little bit harsh on them at times, I think, because we just don't expect them to beat their neighbours. They did it once during COVID, etc. But it just hasn't happened. And it's maybe having a, an unfair impact on their championship prospects over the last few years where I don't think that's the case with the Leinster teams. Well, to an extent, the, the only thing I'd say about that is that Cork kind of slipped out of Division 1 in what? 2014, 13. 2015? Four. Give or take? Yeah. In or around then, anyway. Mm. And, and I've never made it back, you know? And, yeah, you, you, the provincial jackboot is, is very strong, but, you know, you got to get into the Division 1. You got to, you, you know, you need to be spending your life there. 
uh, and developing teams and players and systems of play and all of that sort of stuff. And we and we know all that. Um, what what struck me actually looking at the team that they've been able to to name, Cork have had had real spells over the last three four years where they had you'd look at their squad and you go ah oh, there's got some decent players there and they haven't been able to get them all on the pitch at the same time, whereas like that certainly that forward line that they that they've named for the weekend that's that's you're getting close to more or less their best there you know. Yeah, you get Carlo Manny maybe in there, but yeah. sure. look, every 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 county has injuries, so, so you just can't. No, yeah. I understand that, but like, uh, like Sean Powter hasn't; ju- they've not been able to get the best out of him over the last few years. And I think, look, I, I like I, I'm always loath to get too stuck uh, with with what the bookies say, but like the handicap is eight points. I think they can get within eight points. I think they're. I think they they got something out of last year's championship, you know, whereas a lot, you know, plenty of teams didn't. Plenty of teams uh, sort of went out uh, on a whimper. Cork, Cork, like they got a couple of wins that that people didn't expect them to. And I think they can build on that um, as, you know, until they until they win a game in Killarney and we could be here in 20 years time saying they still haven't won a game in Killarney. So until they do, you can't really back no. them to do so no. I, th- I think it that's the washout that, that, uh, that people think it might be. yeah hopefully not and on that optimistic note we'll leave it and um, thank you very much to peter and maliki and rory look follow the rtga podcast on spotify or apple podcasts or youtube or where, wherever you like to watch it and uh jackie and rory will be back on monday to look over the weekend so uh enjoy your weekends good luck and we'll chat to you soon bye Possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road. And that's not going to be taken away from us. What I love in Hurling, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. It's over the ball.